Hello, welcome. Today I wanted to show you guys the process I use for flattening out my coffee dyed papers that I use in my junk journals and art journals. So this is regular printer paper and this is some paper from notebooks I've taken apart and little sketchbooks. So I'll do another video on how I do my coffee dyeing, but these were coffee dyed and then baked in the oven at 250 degrees until they dried. And then they come out beautiful textures, but they do come a bit wrinkly and a bit thick. You can see the edge here, the stack. So after I iron them, they'll flatten down and I'll be able to get a lot more in a book and I'll have a lot, it'll be a lot easier to store them because they won't be so thick. So. And I have done this with just a regular um, iron, steam iron, but when I found the Cricut Easy Press in the 9 by 12 size, I thought that is the perfect size for ironing a piece of paper. So I set my Cricut Easy Press to 250 degrees and I set the timer for 10 seconds and I flatten out my papers. And I don't always like my papers flat. Sometimes I like to keep this like wavy edge depending on how many sheets I want to fit in my journal. But if you want your pages flat to be easier to work on and to fit more in your journal, this works perfectly. You don't have to move the iron around. You don't have to guess how long to hold it on there. The weight, this thing is heavy. So the weight of it alone is pressing your papers flat, but with the added heat makes them nice and flat. So I want to show you guys this thing has no steam holes or anything like your regular iron does so it won't leave weird marks on your papers so I just go through um, do each paper one at a time I haven't tried doing multiple uh, we might try that and see and I did do a test I have a paper press uh, used for a book binding and I did do a test I put a stack of papers in the paper press and tightened it down as tight as I could and then I did a, ironed a stack of papers with the Cricut easy press and took them out and compared them and the easy press ironed papers were much flatter so pressure plus heat gives you the flattest papers but I will show you now the edge you can see this has got tiny little waves and wrinkles on it after you press before you press it's got very large waves so it's still not 100 percent flat because the papers do shrink up a bit from getting wet and then being cooked in the oven or heat dried so you will still get some waviness but not near as much oh i just want to show you this because i didn't think about it when i bought the pan i bought some baking sheets to cook my paper, bake my papers on. And one of them had a logo raised in the metal in the center that said Black and & Decker. And if I let my papers get on that, it burns that design into the paper. So it's kind of funny when you can only see a couple letters, but I make sure I don't put the entire paper over the center because I don't want Black & Decker to be in my journals. So if you are hunting for baking sheets to use for your coffee or tea dyeing. Make sure they don't have any logos or designs on the baking part. So I just set this on. I do 10 minutes depending on your paper, more or less. And I do 250. I think that's a good temperature for doing paper, ironing paper. And that is the temperature I use in the oven. And it's pretty quick. You just set it on, wait your 10 seconds, take it off. Let's try doing a couple sheets at a time and see if that works as well. And that could speed the process up even more. So let me put two sheets down. We'll see what happens. Okay. They both look pretty flat. 
Don't you guys? I think that worked. Let's do two at a time for a while and make sure that seems to be working. The heat, they both were both warm through, so the heat is penetrating to the bottom paper as well. My worry would be if you put too many in the stack, the heat won't penetrate to the bottom paper. So only the top paper will become flattened. But this is very hot. This is also very hot, and it could be that the ironing board is hot because I have been doing this for a while. Oh, let's, let me push put this one because this paper has got a folded corner, so I'm going to have to carefully put the iron on that to make sure that fold irons out. So let's do that that way. And then when you're doing full sheets, these are, I'm in America, so these are eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. So you do wanna make sure you don't see the paper coming out from the corners, because this says it's a nine by 12, but the corners are rounded. So it's not exactly a nine by 12 surface. All right, we're back to doing a couple sheets. I wanna to tell you about this board. This is just a half inch thick wooden board plywood board from the hardware store. I think it's two foot by four foot, but you can get them to cut any size you want. And then I've just layered a piece of 100% uh, cotton low loft batting over it. And then I just made a cover with fabric. You can just wrap it around and staple it. I've um, run elastic casing and put elastic in it around the edges and then stretch that over the board. And these are a lot sturdier than the ironing boards on legs. And it's a much bigger work surface. And you can make an ironing board in this method to any size you want to fit a table you already have, to fit a small area. I've also got some two foot by two foot boards I use closer to my sewing machine when I don't need as much space. And they're so handy and they're so easy to make. Even if you don't want to sew, you can just staple it to the back. All right, so doing two pages seems to work and that will make this go twice as fast. Here's what our papers are looking like so far. See how thin that is? Should we try three? Let's try three and see what happens because the board is pretty hot by now. So you'll be getting heat coming from the bottom and the top. So it may work. Yes, very hot. And they're all equally thinned, so. Hey, now let me press that corner out before we stack our papers. So if you guys have a different method of flattening papers, or maybe you don't, you like to leave them wrinkly. Uh, let me know in the comments. So we all like to know, and not everyone likes to do the same way, and there's a million ways to do the same thing. So it's fun to learn how everyone else does this. But I never liked having steam holes in my irons. I don't put the steam in them anymore because when something goes wrong with an iron, it's usually because of the water. We have hard water here, and a lot of calcium builds up in the iron, so... I know, use distilled water. But whenever I have anything go wrong with the iron, it's because of the steam function. So I don't put water in them and I don't like the holes, even on fabric, because you're leaving a weird mark on your fabric. But especially on paper, I don't want holes when I'm trying to completely flatten out a paper. So I was so excited to get one of these Cricut irons. I know this is not what they're for, but it's in great extra use for them when you're trying to just get a nice flat, hot surface. All right, so we are almost done. This is the last two pieces of paper that I have that are um, eight and a half by 11 size. And I've got some smaller pieces we'll do. And I don't know, let me show you guys. So it comes with this plastic base that you set it on when you're not using it. It's not hot on the side, I can pick it up and it keeps the heat from off your surface. All right, so let's see. Here's a stack of papers now much thinner still wavy but now they're micro tiny waves not giant waves 
So it'll be a lot easier to store. And now I can make a notebook that is not so poofy with all these papers. All right, and then I've got some other papers here that are very wavy that I've dyed that are much smaller. And I think I can get two side by side. Let's see. Mm, just about, the little corners are sticking out a tiny bit, but I think that should be good. They weren't turned up or anything, so. Let's see how this turns out. If not, we can do one at a time. I don't know, that seems good. See this little corner is turned up because it wasn't completely under the iron. So maybe I will do them just one at a time. I already had this iron preheated before I started the video, but when we're done, I will show you from the beginning how I set it up and turned it on and set, put my paper settings in. And this temperature can go way up for doing, you know, fabrics and vinyl and stuff. But for paper, you really don't need that much heat. A little bit of heat combined with the pressure is all you need. So we'll see these papers. This is lined paper, but it's also got like T lines in it. And that is because I use cookie drying racks, cookie cooling racks on top of some of my baking sheets to lay the papers on. And that raises them up off the baking sheet so heat can get to the top and bottom. But it also makes the coffee pool in the areas of where the lines are on the cooling sheet, cooling rack. So that gives you an extra texture on your papers, an extra pattern. And they dry faster, so two, two benefits to them. Let's keep going on these. I wanna show you, these are papers I did that too. So on these, it made kind of little valleys that the tea would puddle into, and that's the darker lines. And the lighter lines are the ones touching the metal. Here's one, I kind of put it, I usually put them on straight. This was put on at an angle, so now I've got diagonal lines going across. You can see on the back side, there's white where the lines of the metal cooling rack were. All right, a couple more pages here. I just love dyeing with coffee, tea as well, but we usually have leftover coffee in the pot. So instead of wasting it, I just throw some papers in there and use it up for dyeing. It's so fun. I mean, I just dip this in coffee and stuck it in the oven and look at the texture you get from this. And it's always like a surprise. I never know how the papers are going to turn out. And this is the back side. So, it is fun. They do take up a lot of room after they're dyed. I have a stack like a foot high. So ironing them helps give me some storage space for them. All right, so here's our little stack of the small papers now. You see how much thinner it is? So it's still textured. It's still got a little bit of wave on the edges, but it'll be so much easier to work on and a lot easier to put into books and journals. So those are our papers. And then I want to show you, I'll turn this off and bring it into the center. So here's the tray. And I just store it on that tray on my ironing board. So when I start, see on button, it's already saved my settings from the last time I was here. If you wanna change the temperature, you press the temperature button and now you can go up or down. If you find, if maybe you're ironing cardstock or thicker paper, you might wanna go up. I wouldn't go before 275 higher than 275 for paper because paper can burn. You don't want to burn your papers. So I set the temperature, then you can set the time. Press the time button till it flashes. Then you could do how many seconds? 10, I tried a couple, 10 seems to be the best for my papers, but you can do a few tests and see for your papers. So these are your settings, 250 degrees, and it will keep it at that in your 10 seconds. That timer starts when you press this green button. 
So I'll put my paper down, I'll pick this up and set it on top of the paper, and then I'll press the green button and it starts to count down. And then even if you're not here, if you set it down and go do something, it'll beep when it's time to lift this back off. So you come back and go, okay, time to take it off. And that's all, all there is to it. I just wanted to share this tip with you. Um, this new process, this new uh, use for the Cricut Easy Press. If you already have one in your studio from making things with your Cricut, this is something else you can use it for. So thank you guys for watching and happy creating.